to life. You know, this is a show where we're really trying to enable you to get the most out of life. You know, for me today, I don't have time to go to the gym, but I've made it out of the house and I'm going for a walk to just get my body moving that little bit more. On tonight's show, we've got lots of tips and services that are really gonna enable you to get the most out of life. Take a look at what's coming up. We're gonna show you some self-defense moves with a new form of martial arts. There's another delicious juice from Julia. Then we're heading back to the chaotic, the fun, the free-for-all that is the break room. Everyone loves getting something for nothing. Here's your chance to win big. Get Alive viewers have the opportunity to win some incredible prizes. So make sure you go to our website at getalife.tv and you could win yourself something fabulous. Today on the show, we're giving away two delicious hampers of yum stuff from Dr. Supergoods, full of goji berries, muesli, dried fruit, and other great healthy goodies. Each hamper is valued at over $75. And from the brilliant people at Made by Fresco, it's a fruit infuser water bottle, it's a thermos flask, and the quality is unmatchable. We have six of these great products to give away, so go to the getalife.tv website to find out more. Coming up next, Craig headed over to Dayhab, where he really dived into the issue that is facing so many families, addiction. Welcome back, guys. I'm Craig Harper here at Dayhab in Glen Waverley, chatting addiction with Mick Hall. We live in a culture where obviously not only is a drinking alcohol acceptable, yeah. it's encouraged. Yeah. You know? That's right. And so, you know, it's part of who we are. You know, we're one of the biggest drinking nations in the world and we almost hang our hat on that as some kind of achievement. Yeah. Um, how, where's the line between, is it, is it just those things you said before where it's out of control, but... Uh, can we drink, like, is it possible that someone doesn't drink, then they have 37 on a Saturday, but it's only on Saturday? Yeah, absolutely. And and so, so alcoholism or addiction isn't about how much you use or drink or how often. Mm. It's about what it does to you. Mm. So here's the thing. If you have a drink, all right, but you can't guarantee what's going to happen once you pick up that drink, mm. you've got a problem. Mm. Are you able to pick up a drink and say, I'm only having three and then you do it. And then do it. Right. Right? And not just once out of ten times, mm. but ten times out of ten times. Right? A few people spring to mind, someone I'm thinking about who will remain nameless, that I know has two or three wines. Yeah. Uh, or two wines every night of their life. Yes. And I reckon if I said to that person, no, don't. But that's all they have, but they always have it. Yes. If... If I said to that person, just don't do that for four weeks, yeah. and they couldn't, would, would that make them an alcoholic? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it does. And, and, and look, that's just off the cuff, so we'd need to sort of get a little bit more into the background of yeah, that person. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, is there negative consequences coming from that, from them yeah. having the two wines a night? Are they unhappy with it? Yeah. Are they doing things that, you know, are causing them shame, guilt, yeah. remorse, regret? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is there emotional baggage being accumulated along the way? Yeah. Are there people around that person that are really concerned, yet mm. they can't see the forest for the mm. trees? Mm. Is there any medical issues? You know, the, these are all things that sort of come into play with addiction. And, and you know, essentially what it comes down to is, is that um, if you're using a substance um, and, and you're getting an addiction, yeah. right, we're only going to be able to do something about it when you get to the point where you yeah. realise, oh, no. Yeah. Things are going bad. Yeah. Because while things aren't going bad, the person doesn't want to recognise that there's any problem with what they're doing. Yeah. Even being here doing some work at Dayhab is meeting some of the people that come into the program yeah. who are very high level, very successful, some of them high profile, yeah. very high functioning, um, capable people who have kind of gotten away with it, yeah. for want of a better term, yeah. for a long time. And then, you know, and they know and they're like you said, they're they're a bit delusional, they're hiding it, they're, you know, they're trying to keep it from their colleagues or their staff or their family or their friends and they just get to a point and they go, nah, you know. Uh, it's amazing how well, not the right word, but well some people hide addiction. It is. It's a, it's incredible. and <laughs> It's an art. Well, it is. But, I mean, I, they can hide it from an area of their life. Yeah. You know, so, so highly successful people... From an appearance point of view, they might yes. be able to hide it. But in their profession, they excel mm. and, and they're fantastic. But it's all of the stuff that happens outside of that 
mm. where it all comes crumbling down, you know. And and I guess that when for for those people, normally what happens is mm. is that when all that outside stuff looks like it's about to filter into their yeah. high profile, yeah, that's when they put their hand up and say, "Can you please help me?" Because they know that the end is coming, or 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 that it's going to start to infiltrate their their um, professional uh, space. And it's I guess there's that you know there's that that facade of this external kind of success story with yep. this internal train wreck that I'm hiding from the world. Correct. Uh, that's great stuff, Mick. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back with more addiction talk very soon. Addiction destroys lives and shatters families. Hi, I'm David Schwartz. And if someone you know is battling addiction, there is hope and there is help. Addiction treatment specialist Dayhab are industry leaders, they're friends of mine, and they're ready right now to help you turn your life around. Their residential rehab program offers recovery, help, and hope every step of the way. Take the first step and get in touch with the guys at Dayhab today. We had such a fantastic response to our segment on the break room. Remember the one where we were throwing cups at the wall and breaking plates on the floor? We couldn't wait to go back and do it all again. We sent our lovely Tylea off to the break room who turned into ferocious Tylea as she started breaking things everywhere. Today I thought it was my turn as I am a very frustrated, hard-working mother. I work too much, the kids don't listen, it's all too much for me. I need to break stuff too. Hello Ed, thank you for having me. Anytime, thanks for coming. I want to know more about this because I have a lot of pent-up anger inside that I need to get rid of. Yeah, don't we all, don't we all. Can you see me getting excited already? I love it, I love it. <laughs> what type of people do you have coming here? Is it mums like me? Definitely, so we definitely get a lot of stressed out mums. You know, it's not easy raising kids. And uh, you know, nothing beats just getting a babysitter or getting shoveling them off to dad for a little while. Coming here, having your own little session at the break room, and then you can get back to it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, let's go. Choose your weapon and then we'll head on in. So the break room is a fantastic space where you can finally get rid of all that anger that you've been harboring, right? And the best way to do that is take a nice big coffee cup and just launch it straight at a wall, right? Gets the adrenaline going, it's a little bit naughty, it's a little bit loud, and it just really gets you razzle dazzle. Well, what type of stuff do people break? So we've got a whole bunch of stuff. We've got mostly crockery. Mm -hmm which is just awesome to smash with a baseball bat. But I love it when people bring stuff in. We've had fantastic people bring in like big gravy boats. We had someone bring in a drum kit. Oh, I a love drum it. Kit. I might yeah. bring my laptop in. Awesome. Now, I want to know why do actually people come here? It's almost like they could come here instead of seeing a psychologist in my mind. Yeah, yeah. People typically come here for catharsis. So they're really stressed out and they're just looking for something that isn't really like eating or drinking your feelings, right? That's something that I was doing a lot and that's why I started the break room because I didn't want to be smashing hamburgers and smashing pints. I wanted to be smashing pints in here, right? And that's why like people come. It's for the catharsis. It gives them something else to do and just gives them that, that adrenaline rush, which nothing beats it. <laughs> How do people book in here? So they go to thebreakroom.com.au and book from there. Oh my goodness, I've actually never experienced anything like that in my life. I'm puffed, I'm feeling excited, energetic, and I'm feeling actually quite zen after all of that. All of my frustrations have gone. When I first walked in there, I felt sort of a little bit of adrenaline running through my bones and, um, and I'm feeling great. I want to do it again and I'm bringing my husband next time. Welcome back to the show. In just a moment, Julia is going to serve up another juice that you can make at home. But first, if you've ever been afraid of walking alone at night, you're going to want to pay close attention to this next story. And I've got to say, I'm feeling very safe around you too, Chris and Adam. Thank you for having us here today. Thanks for being here. We had a great time here a few weeks back and I'm back in my fitness gear and I'm wanting to sort of get really involved. Yes, here at Krav Maga Evolution, we specialize in two systems, Krav Maga and Grace Jiu Jitsu. So what's great about Krav Maga that you already know is that it's a very effective, one of the most effective self-defense systems in the world. Multiple attacker scenario, uh, mind focused as well as weapons. 
excellently suited uh, for anybody, yeah, uh, men, women and children. And what's great to uh, supplement that is the Gracie Jiu Jitsu system too, which is uh, predominantly about ground fighting, where a lot of fights end up. The whole goal of Gracie Jiu Jitsu is to get you street ready. The goal is, is when someone comes in here for the very first time, they come in here and they learn those 36 most effective techniques. And it usually takes about six to eight months to master, and that's the best way to get them street ready. What's the first technique? First thing is actually the trap and roll defense. So we're talking about a situation where your opponent, your attacker, is striking you or have you in a headlock. And we teach you how to escape that, how to get on top of the fight, and then get away safe. So how does Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sort of work in a real life scenario? It's a really good question. So in the scenario that we're about to see, you're gonna find someone who has been distracted. Okay, often an attack starts with a distraction. When that distraction happens, that person can either be taken away or hit. If you do get hit, there's a good chance that you're gonna to go to the ground and the attack will continue. The goal for that moment is to stay close to your opponent, as close as possible. Distance equals damage. So the idea is to hold and hug and stay super sticky. From here, what you can do is use your own body to get distance from the attacker. Yeah, take that pressure off your throat by using your legs. So use angles and leverage to either get out from underneath, get on top of the fight, run, get safety, or actually submit your opponent with either leverage on a joint or a choke. Well, I can imagine that's something a lot of people would be really interested in. Yeah, they are. Let's have a look at some examples. I love it here at Krav Maga Evolution. Uh, great techniques, good fitness, top people. I can look after myself from bullies and um, bear guys in the streets, um, random people in the streets, like from them attacking me, like bullies. I have so much more confidence in myself now and Jiu Jitsu really did that for me. <laughs> Everyone's really nice and friendly and um, everyone always makes me feel welcome here and it's a really awesome training atmosphere and I really recommend it to anyone. Thanks to the people at Krav Maga for making us feel so welcome and teaching us a few self-defense moves. Now, after the break, Craig Harper's back and he's gonna show us how to turn good routines into good habits. But first, it's Juicing Julia with another tasty drink. Hello, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm Jules with another recipe with my Kuvings juicer. Today, I'm sharing with you one of our most popular recipes. Of course, it's the fat burner. Really, really simple ingredients that everyone should have in their kitchen all the time. Full of vitamins, full of minerals, and really will get your body going, keep that metabolism up, energize you, and keep you feeling alive and full of vitality all day. So we're gonna start with some celery. Celery is really high in vitamins and minerals. A lot of people don't go for the celery, but celery is really high in water content, so it's gonna be really, really hydrating. And with the Kuvings juicer, you are gonna get a lot of juice out of your celery, so it's a really nice addition. We've got some carrots, again, really high in vitamins and minerals, full of antioxidants, and of course, beta carotene, which is what gives carrots their orange color and a real vibrancy to this juice. And then we're gonna pop in some green apple. Again, really great for you, balances out that flavor, adds a touch of sweetness and really completes this very simple juice. So as you can see, the juicer is actually blending and squeezing out all the juice from these fruits and vegetables. Unlike a lot of other juices, you can actually see it churning through, crushing up the juice and really pushing out all that juice. And you can see how much juice we're getting out. So check out that Vitality Juice. And I just wanna show you a quick little look at the type of pulp we get out. This is really very dry compared to a lot of other juices on the market and there's hardly anything left at all. Just remember, everything you put into a juice is what you're going to get out, either in pulp and fibre or in juice. And I don't know about you, but if I'm making a juice, I really want more juice than I want pulp and fibre. So that's why a really good juicer like this Kuving C7000 will actually give you more of the juice and less of the fibre. So, time for a try. we go, very simple juice. Gets the whole body going, fills you with vitality and energy, really hydrating, cheers. If you'd like a chance to win a juicer so you can create this recipe at home, all you need to do is pop onto our website, getalife.tv, 
and you could enter our great juicer giveaway competition where you could possibly win one of six Kuvings juices. Thanks, Julia. That juice looks absolutely delicious. I definitely need to put my name in the draw to win one of those juicers. Now stay with us because after the break, we're gonna head back to Jim Brew. Welcome back to the show. Now, for all of you parents out there, listen up. We're off to an incredible place that really shows you how to give your child the best head start in life. Programs like Jimbaroo give a huge positive difference to your children's social, sporting and academic achievements. And a lot of this success stems from the contributions made from the teachers and facilitators. Today I'm here with leading consultant, Marianne Shriver, who is going to tell us about her involvement in the program and her background and how it all got started. Thank you so much for being here. That's a pleasure. I've been in education for 50 years. This indicates that I'm very passionate about it. I learned about how to detect retained primitive reflexes and how they interfere with brain development. And then last of all, I gained the knowledge to use specific techniques that help children to overcome any retained reflexes. Tell us about the skills needed to be a consultant within the program. There are many skills that are required to become a consultant. But the most important one is probably gathering as much knowledge and understanding about brain development and how the brain functions as well as knowing what the role is of the primitive reflexes in child development, the importance of sensory motor integration leading to perception. All these are the foundations for learning and for behaviour. As a consultant, we need to be particularly skilled at detecting the very just noticeable differences in children who are brought to the consultancy so that we can ascertain whether they're going to be at risk of having any further social, emotional, physical or academic problems. And also what's required is some very detailed and careful observation of the children that we cannot test because of their age and then also use those skills to actually analyse the test results so that we can see what kind of implications these brain immaturities will have wow. for the child. It's all quite complex, isn't it? Now, what type of concerns do parents come to you with? Oh, they come with all kinds of concerns. For example, the babies are brought along because of developmental delay, which means that these babies, even though they may be 10 months and older, haven't as yet learned to roll, they haven't been able to sit themselves up or do any tummy crawling. So it gives us an opportunity to teach the parents specific developmental movements that they can pattern into the baby's brains and do these at home at very short spurts throughout the day and within a very short period of time, all those babies are mobile. So the parents can help their children as well at home, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Do you have a particular case study that you're quite proud of that you've worked with? Yes, not only do I see children on a one-to-one -one basis here in Melbourne, but I also Skype with children around the world. And this particular one was in Malta, where the child had an extreme overload of sensitivity. It was so extreme that she could barely leave the home and also missed a lot of school, therefore her language development was way behind. She had no reading and writing at all. So with a very devoted mother, and us Skyping very regularly, she was able to implement the program on a daily basis. And so the child was able to overcome those very severe sensory issues. She was able to learn to speak properly. She was able to read and write. 
complete her primary school and now she's completed her secondary school as well. So oh. that's an amazing achievement. It's an achievement. amazing outcome and a fabulous result obviously given by you and you must be so proud of that achievement. Well, as you can see and as you've explained to us, this program is absolutely phenomenal and if anyone out there listening has a child with a learning difficulty or anything like that, they know where now to come. Thank you so much, Marianne. It's a pleasure. So fantastic to catch up with the people at Jim Brew. I always find what they have to say to be absolutely fascinating. Now, speaking of kids, we've got a big kid coming up next, our very own self-help guru, Craig Harper, with more life tips. I want you to think about your life, to consider what you're doing with it and not doing with it. To think about your past, where you've been, what you've experienced, seen, done, not done, learned, built, destroyed, cried over, laughed at. The joy and the pain, the good stuff and the bad. For better or worse, you can't change it. And for you, it means whatever you think it means because on planet you, the past only has the power, influence and control that you give it. Things are just things, but you are the meaning giver, the reality creator. You exist and operate in a physical space, but where you do most of your living is in that non-physical space called your mind. The cerebral hard drive that exists between your ears, your data processing center, the internal place where external events, experiences and moments in time are filtered, interpreted, given meaning and turned into stories, your stories. Life happens to you, around you, and despite you. Now I want you to think about now. What you're currently doing and not doing. What you're conquering and avoiding. The lessons, the wasted time, the beautiful time. The peaks and troughs, the psychology, physiology, sociology and emotion of the human experience. The many layers of being human, the jigsaw puzzle that is you. Think about what you're giving, what you're getting what you're creating, who you are and who you're becoming. The impact, good or bad, that you have on the people in your world. Your willingness to learn and unlearn. To be humble, to listen, to see the world through the eyes of another. To consider what your life is about, what you're about. To think about what you might do and achieve if you were to face your fears, exploit your potential, create your own opportunities and step into the fullness of your power and possibilities. And now I want you to think about you, just you, not the past, present or future, just you. The you that remains when your things are removed from the story. The you that exists beyond your career, your role, results, money, reputation, physical body, and even your fear. I want you to consider the possibility that you may have been programmed to live someone else's beliefs, to align with someone else's thinking, Adopt someone else's truth as your own, to comply, to fit in, to doubt yourself, to live someone else's expectations, values and dreams. To be anyone but you. I want you to know there's more for you, more than you've ever dreamed, more calm, more peace, more joy, more fun, more happiness than you've ever imagined. Maybe it's time for you to think for yourself, decide for yourself, learn for yourself, to listen to that inner voice, the powerful one, not the fearful one, to choose your path to find your passion and live your own truth. So I'm here to support you, to encourage you not to settle, to be courageous, to step up, not down, to manage your fear, not let it manage you. I'm here to say that you're good enough even when you don't feel it, that you don't need the approval of others. It's just another fear-based lie that despite the overthinking, self-loathing and self-doubt, you have more power than you understand, but you must use it, not waste it. As a conscious and sometimes enlightened being hurtling through space and time on a giant revolving rock in a biological spacesuit that we call the human body, your potential is vast, but your time and energy are not infinite. So do the work. I'm not here to tell you that bad things don't happen to good people. We all know they do. Or that life's always fair. Sometimes it's a bitch, but life is life. Good, bad, messy, amazing, hard, easy, terrifying, beautiful. And in the middle of that life is you, the author of your own story.
thanks Craig for all of your life tips. I know I always appreciate them. And thanks to you for tuning in and joining us on tonight's show. Our show's over, but don't worry, we'll be back the same time, same place next week. But now it's your opportunity to get off the couch, to get moving, to really get out there and get a life. Nice and quick hand action, and if you're waiting for me, it actually goes to some sound effects.